Hello Morales community, my name is Joseph and I am your Web3 instructor. In this video, I will show you how you can use the Get Transaction endpoint provided by Morales by just giving a transaction hash. We can get all the content of that transaction and I have built this cool application that shows you what we're getting back. So if we paste the transaction hash in there, choose Ethereum as our main chain, hit submit, and there we get some content for that transaction. We get the time that that has happened, the, which block number it belongs to, from and to which address, how much the gas price was, and then the transaction hash itself. And with that, we can just copy that, go to Etherscan, paste it in, and get all the same content there as well. And to double check this one, we can see that the block number itself, it ends with 6991. So let's go back to our application and we can see that it's the same block number. So if this is interesting and you want to learn how you can build this application, stay stuck in and I will show you both the documentation and the app itself and we can build this together. Welcome back to the documentation for the get transaction endpoint. And with this endpoint, we can get the content of a transaction by given transaction hash. So the only required parameter for this endpoint is the transaction hash itself. And we can paste that in right here. Um, besides that one, we have a few optional. We have the chain parameter. If we're not using this one, it's going to be Ethereum by default. And then we have the subdomain parameter, which is if you have a local dev chain. So let's try this one out. We can hit try it button right here. And then we can see an example of this response. So you can see that you get all the content of this transaction just by giving the transaction hash. And we have extracted some of these values to show in our application. Now let's jump straight into the code and I will show you how you can build this one. So in our VS code, we have created a root folder called get transaction by hash. And within that root folder, I have created one for the front end and one for the back end. So let's start with the back end folder and with package.json because we have installed four dependencies that you will have to install as well. We have installed Morales, Express, .env, and Course. Now, before we jump into the index.js file, I have created a .env file in the root of the backend, and that's because I want to store my API key in there instead of using it inside the index.js file. Now, if you don't have your own API key, make sure you go to morales.io and create your free account. Make sure you log into that account. And once you get to your admin page, go to Web3 APIs, and there you have your API key. Now copy it from here, go back to the VS code and inside the .env file, create a variable, name it Morales API key and paste your API key in there. Now save this, close it up and go to index.js file. From here, we're requiring some of the dependencies we installed. We want our server to be an express server and to be on port 5001. We require Morales to be able to do our API calls course because we want to take parameters from the front end send to the back end and use them in the back end for our api calls and also we want to require env because we want to use our api key like this we need to use it like this and store it in another const variable call this whatever you want i've decided to call it the same and at the bottom of this file we are uh, opening the gate with the start function towards Morales to do our API calls. We need to send our API key as a parameter. And at the same time, we're listening to our server. So this means the server is up and running. For this backend server, we, have only, we only have one endpoint, which is the slash transaction hash. And in here, we're extracting the parameters from the front end. We're using EVM API and the get transaction endpoint and passing those parameters along. Now, if the response comes back and it's an unsuccessful response, then we're gonna print something went wrong and the error message itself. But if it was successful, we're gonna send the response as it is to the front end. So let's jump straight into the front end folder and let's start with package.json as well, because here you can see that I have installed Axios and also React Select. Now the home page of our application is the index.js file. And from here, we're rendering two components, one being main and one being header. So let's start with header. And you can see that this one 
contains the logo that's on the top left corner and then the title itself. Let's move on to main.js and here is where everything is happening. We're importing Axios and React Select. So React Select is for our drop-down menus. In this case, we're using, we're using three networks, Ethereum, Querly, and Mumbai. The value of each of these drop-down needs to be the respective chain ID. And we have also added some styling. Now, in order to store the value of this network, we created this const up here, chain value. And once you click the drop-down menu and selecting your preferred network, that's when we're gonna store that value in this variable up here. Now, other variables that we want to store are if we're gonna show the result or not, and we don't want to show anything if you haven't clicked submit. We're storing the result itself and then the transaction hash. So what's happening once we hit submit? We have this input field that has an ID of transaction hash, and we can select that one like this, and then extract the value from it and store it in the variable transaction hash. Now that we stored the chain value as well up here, we don't want the whole thing. We just want this value right here, which is the chain ID. So we can extract the, that one like this and store it in chain. Now with these two variables, we can do a get request. This is when where we're using Axios to do our get request to the backend server on port 5001 slash transaction hash. And we're sending the transaction hash and the chain itself as parameters. Now the API call went successful. We sent back the response to the front end and I want to console log it so you can see how it looks like. So let's go back to the application. Let's copy this transaction hash from here, make this request, and I'm going to open the inspector console. And this is the response we're getting back. So inside data is where you have all the data we, we are displaying right here. And you also have the logs for this transaction hash. Now pretty easy, right? So let's close this one, go back to Visual Studio Code and as we saw, we have the response and then dot data is where we have all the data we displayed. So I'm storing this one in the result variable. Now we want to show the result because we got the result and we want to empty the input field and the drop down menu like this. So below this form and below the submit button is where we have the result section. So in here, we can actually just extract the values that we want to show. For this case, time, so we have it in the result um, container above, and then we want to display the timestamp, and we want to format it a little bit more beautiful because we don't need the exact time, we only want the date. We want to display the block number, uh, the from and the to address like this, gas price and the transaction hash. So it doesn't have to be more advanced like this. And with just a few lines of code, you can very quickly get the response back from the Morales API and display it like this. So if you have another transaction hash for a different um, chain, you can ch just add your network in this drop down menu. Make sure you add the correct chain ID for that specific network. And then once you hit, let's say uh, Mumbai transaction hash in here, you can choose Mumbai hit submit, and then you will get that response instead. So I hope you learned how you can use this get transaction endpoint provided by Morales. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and I hope I will see you in the next one.